Hey everyone, so one of the most common questions I get is when I'm practicing now full on MMA for the last almost about a year. Actually, yeah, it's been a full year. I trained, I did a six months intensive camp and now it's uh, two months that I'm training with the pro team of Street Plus Gym. So I'm doing a lot of intensive MMA lately. And uh, again, a lot of people are asking if my Aikido comes into play. Whether it does or not, we'll talk all about that in this video. Now, of course, all the people that ask me that question, they expect or want me to pull off some fancy you know, technique in the midst of MMA or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Even during my first cage fight, people expected me to, kind of half expected for me to do some wrist lock or do, or do some other nice Aikido you know, technique. Or they're like, oh, so do wrist locks come into your Jiu Jitsu? Or, or were you able to pull off an Aikido you know, move in MMA? And uh, unfortunately, I have to let you down and let you know that no, <laughs> the answer is no. And and I will break down and explain to you why exactly that does not happen or that have not happened to me. Uh, but also I want to bring in some positiveness into this and to let you know that Aikido was not all for nothing. There were some good things and I will also break down what, what were the good things that, that I did bring from Aikido into the training. Now, first of all, you need to understand this principle of you fight how you train. And MMA is a lot about fighting. And Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, although there's no strikes, in, in a way it's, it's pretty much intensive fighting because there's full-on pressure, there's full-on resistance. And, and, and that's something that you do not experience in Aikido. That's something that I practiced Aikido for about 14 years, uh, you know, three of the years as a living student every day, two to four times per day. And uh, I never had much of pressure or much of live resistance. And the thing is, Actual fighting consists of something that I picked up from coach Matt Thornton is one of the elements is energy or pressure as, as the actual resistance where somebody's pushed really pushing you or pulling you and or, or just standing there not letting you move uh, there's timing which is essential but the timing is uh, it's related to that actual pressure and the third aspect motion the person will move in unpredictable in various ways adding pressure and you have to time your technique well to that and if you train without pressure and without uh, spontaneous movement uh, the person is not really resisting or not really trying to get you either by striking or submitting you uh, you will not develop real timing you will not develop real skills to deal with such a, a person and so that's what every traditional martial artist who trained without live resistance that's what they experience I've already met uh, a huge number of people who've trained traditional martial arts uh, with static cooperative techniques for years and they roll with a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu blue belt or they spar with an amateur boxer and they get destroyed because when you train in those in that static environment you just do not know how to respond to all of that. Now that same principle applies to Aikido techniques. So I know a lot of Aikido techniques and I've did them thousands upon thousands of times but I never did them with a resisting opponent. And now when you step in to train with a resisting opponent uh, with a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioner or an MMA guy they're giving you full-on resistance they really are trying they're really going out there to get you and so you don't have time to simply pull off some random Aikido technique because you you don't know how it works under those circumstances again you fight how you train and and the Aikido guys including myself we never trained in that way so it's a whole different realm now that is not to say no one in from the Aikido world could pull off those techniques I have met some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioners who actually added some Aikido wrist locks efficiently into their Jiu Jitsu game uh, and uh, those people are, are heard about those people that they exist but the thing is they practiced it they they mastered it and also they practiced the the other new martial art for a long time whether that's a purple belt in Jiu Jitsu or whether that's a black belt in Jiu Jitsu and and that's where their techniques Aikido techniques all techniques started to come in and that's something where 
somewhere where I imagine that maybe, or I'm pretty sure one day it'll come to me as well, especially if, as a blue belt, as a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu blue belt, if I'm rolling with a white belt, it's just so easy, you know, the white belt, unless like it's a spazzy big dude, then you have to kind of deal with, with that person. But if it's just, you know, a white belt of your size, no experience, it's so easy to take care of, to take, to, to deal with them, that I can see that, okay, I'll probably, you know, get a wrist like here and I, I, I'll have that space to be like, well, I don't have much to do, so I might as well try to get my techniques in. And some of the Aikido techniques might come in. To be honest though, I am always looking for a channel, challenge. I'm always training with better guys. I, 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 I never specifically go to weaker guys just to feel strong. And, and especially here at SBD Ireland, I'm training with a pro team. It's guys and girls who've done MMA for three times, five times, 10 times more than I did. So they're destroying me. I, I have, I'm constantly uh, working on surviving against them. And if I pull off a, a, a guillotine choke or, or, or a triangle or something, it's, it's like, whoa, I did this. It's, it's exceptional. But the thing is, I, I don't have time to experiment and try out uh, my old static techniques in a new, different environment. And I don't have time and, and the, the capacity to, 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 work, to work out how it works. And that's not my goal either. The way I personally look at it, uh, and then the, the game of MMA is already so well developed. It is so well cleared up of what works, what doesn't work, what's high percentage, what's low percentage. And the game there has been perfected from wrestling to boxing, to kickboxing, to, to grappling as it was in Jiu Jitsu. Uh, the best of the best techniques are already given to you and they were tested and proved from generation to generation. And now as I come in as a, as a beginner student, and I for sure I still consider myself to be a beginner. I'm still just a fresh blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm still a new new guy in MMA. I'm just having I'm just about to have my second fight. That's not much. Some people are training for decades. So when I'm there as a new guy, I don't want to come in and be like doesn't matter what you are gonna teach me, I know Aikido and I'm gonna work on my stuff. It's like, no, I want to learn the best of the best of what you have to offer. And maybe one day when I become so comfortable at all of this, either Aikido will naturally come in or either I will naturally feel a draw to be like, oh, let's try to add those Aikido movements. But if they would have been the most high percentage movements out there, trust me, the MMA guys would have swallowed it and digested it and used it already and of course there's always some new thing that comes in in the past everybody thought Taekwondo does not work in MMA and somebody's like oh look at these nice kicks and same as with karate and so so people are surprised all the time in MMA if there's 1% of something new that works really well they will take it and who knows maybe some Aikido wrist locks could come into play or some Aikido froze but but they will come into play only when someone has become super comfortable at the MMA game and they're good at the Aikido and they start to merge these worlds and trust me, I am not there yet. That said, in the beginning of the video I told you that I will also point out some positive aspects of what I brought in from Aikido into the training, uh, but those are pretty regular things, what you can expect. So for example, feeling the distance, which is huge in striking. Uh, I feel, I'm not saying I'm super good at it, but I feel from the training of Aikido, I did develop skills to kind of get a sense of, you know, what's the right distance where somebody can catch me and when somebody can't, when I can, can, can catch those people. I do recognize that that probably comes from Aikido training, that, that ability to, to sense distance, which is called ma'ai in Aikido. Also just the ability to perceive complex motions and to be able to embody them. In Aikido, there's so many difficult and complicated movements and intricacies that you, if you train for a while, you're forced to really become observant and to look at the details and to envision them and feel them into your own body and be able to replicate them. And that, I feel, helps me in a huge way because I have the focus and I have the ability to, to perceive that motion. So when I see a new technique, I feel it's much easier for me to pick up that motion versus a new guy who has not trained anything. Uh, that gives me an advantage. To continue on this thought, the body awareness in Aikido, all the rolling and all, all the ukemi uh, and the techniques themselves, they, they give you a sense of body awareness of how your body can move on, how you can position yourself. And I feel that definitely helps in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, in grappling, and even in striking, just, just the sense 
sense of how the body works and how to utilize it. Again, it does not make me an expert. It does not give me a black belt in MMA right away, uh, but it does help. It does help uh, me as a student. Then also too, on top of that, the, the mindset of Aikido, uh, the kind of the Japanese martial arts mindset of always being a student, of always feeling like you're a beginner, of always being open to new things and being humble and, and really opening to stuff. I feel that is there or that that uh, that ability to flow in training rather than to be spazzy and and to push things which is terrible and it doesn't help your progress uh, so that's out of the way because Aikido taught me to kind of become be calm and and move with things and I really appreciate that part now does it would every Aikido guy bring that in unfortunately I don't think so because also traditional martial arts uh, Japanese traditional martial arts Chinese traditional martial arts they tend to create a strong identity and sometimes they actually boost the ego of the person and when the key comes in to cross train they just can't let it go they are still trying to hold on to their identity and not everyone develops that mindset but ideally they do and that mindset for me that helped so again i'm sure you wanted a different answer you wanted me to say oh yes i pulled off this like you don't move or this like you don't move and but this is the truth this is the honest truth and i hope it helps you understand how i feel about bringing my aikido into the mma game and hopefully if you ever try try to cross train this mindset will help you as well so to sum it up in a way aikido did help me become a better fighter not in the way that I expected but it did help me in various ways and i appreciate that all of that said if you want to fight well you have to fight if you again you just uh, you, i cannot repeat that enough you fight how you train if you want to be able to to really be good at physical altercations you have to experience them as close as real as that reality possible without obviously damaging your brain or joints too badly so i hope that answers that question at least to some degree and then the next time anybody asks me oh so did you pull off some aikido moves in your mma i will just point you to this video uh, but let me know if you have some other big questions uh, i'd be happy to answer the most common questions there are just to kind of demystify the whole uh, the whole story so yeah let me know in the, in the comments if you have some major questions of both the ones that are most interesting to you and i'll do my best to break them down and share them with you with 100% honesty. And until we do that, as always, I wish you to own your journey.